Welcome back. You're watching SETV News. Now we move on to the international story updates. The United States condemned the derogatory remarks of BJP's members against Prophet Muhammad وسلم, which has sparked outrage among the Muslims world and demanded an apology from the Indian government. In a press briefing, U.S. State Department spokesperson N.E.D. Price condemned the incident and urged for respect human rights. The condemnation from the U.S. government came days after India's ruling party BJP spokesperson Nupur Sharma and its media Head Naveen Kumar Jindal has passed hateful comments towards Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Following the incident, Muslim countries including Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, UAE, Kuwait, Oman, Indonesia, Iraq, Maldives, Jordan, Libya, and Bahrain not only had condemned the remarks but also boycotted Indian products. The Indian police also shot dead two Muslims protesting the BGP spokespersons blasphemous remarks and demolished a female Muslim activist house legally. Protests have erupted in India's northeastern Bihar state in response to a new military recruitment system. According to report, protesters on Thursday set fire to train carriages and an office of India's ruling party. One protester was killed in a clash with police in the southern city of Secunderabad, a government official said. Called Agnipath or the Path of Fire program, the system was announced on Tuesday and aims to hire soldiers for four years only as the army tries to cut its pension expenditure and modernize its forces with younger personnel. The government plans to open 46,000 spots to those aged between 17 and a half and 21 years old. But after the four year period, only a quarter of them will be able to stay in the army. Between 17 and a half and 21 years old. Leaders of Germany, France, Italy and Romania have visited Ukraine and met with President Volodymyr Zelensky in a show of support amid the ongoing Ukraine conflict. After talks with the Ukrainian president on Thursday, EU leaders expressed that a war-torn nation should be granted EU candidate status. Speaking during the trip, Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz said that, in quote, Ukraine belongs to the European family. Although Zelensky has thanked the West for its assistance, Ukrainian officials have voiced criticism that its allies have been soft on Russia and delayed armed supply deliveries and tougher sanctions. At least five people lost their lives in a wall collapse incident as strong winds and heavy rain wreaked havoc in Lahore. The incident occurred late Thursday night on Lahore's Firozpur Road where a wall of a house collapsed due to strong winds blowing at a speed of at least 124 km per hour. One person also injured and shifted to the hospital. The tempest also disrupted the power system, tripping over 100 feeders installed in circles of Lahore, Okara and Sheikhupura. Meanwhile, heavy rainfall was witnessed after gusty winds in many areas of Lahore, including Gargi Shaho, Davis Road, Canal Road and the Airport Road. Heavy rain also battered Sheikhpura, while drizzling was recorded in Chunian and Nankana Sahib. Despite the ongoing Spanish heat wave, worshippers in Toledo braved the streets to watch the Corpus Christi procession. With temperature reaching 39 degrees Celsius amid Spain's earliest heat wave in 40 years, spectators watched as an effigy representing Jesus was carried on worshippers soldiers on Thursday. To combat the heat, the local town hall handed out fans and 10,000 bottles of water. The heat wave is set to continue until the end of the week, with temperatures climbing above 40 degrees Celsius in parts of Spain. To combat the heat, the local town hall handed out fans. After fleeing Afghanistan for Iraq, 
Following the Taliban's return to power last year, 32 students received their bachelor's degree in various fields. The graduation ceremony held at the University of Soleimani was attended by Iraq's President Burham Saleh, who offered his congratulations. The students who were originally enrolled at the American University of Afghanistan had fled to Iraq over fears that they would be unable to complete their studies. At the American University of Afghanistan, had fled to a now sports news. FIFA, the highest governing body of football, has announced the venue of 2026 FIFA World Cup. The World Cup will be held in 16 venues in three North American countries, the United States, Mexico and Canada. In 2026, for the first time, three countries will host the World Cup together. Besides, this is the first time that the World Cup is going to be held with the participation of 48 countries. As a result, the number of matches will increase. Increase. So where the Qatar World Cup will be played in eight venues, the next one will be played in 16 venues. FIFA has announced that the entire World Cup will be played in 11 venues in the United States, three in Mexico and two in Canada. Although the United States and Mexico has hosted the World Cup before, Canada is the venue for the World Cup for the first time. Before ending, we go to the headlines again. Worsening flood threatens power supply in Silet. Army deployed to manage heavy flooding. SSC equivalent exams postponed. Daily COVID-19 test positivity rate surges to 6.27%. 433 new cases have been recorded in the last 24 hours. World Bank must be apologetic and feel sorry now for cancelling funding for Podda Bridge, said Foreign Minister. We are up to date with our top stories so far here on SATV and to know the latest news visit www.satv.tv. Stay with SATV.